All right, Mario in Ontario, Canada. This is your new Radio Oddity QT60 here. So we're gonna set it up like I always do. Uh, you do have the adapter for the microphone here. And you also are getting a PC programming cable that you wanted. So sold both of those to you as well. Um, so we're all set there. I'll get those in the box for the radio. With the radio, they'll be where the microphone and all the accessories are. So I'll put both of those in there. Um, there is no like packaging for these cables, really. So um, this one will work just fine. I'm actually going to use it with the radio just to make sure that it uh, will work. But uh, these 10 meter cables are all one and the same. Basically, it's just a little bit different uh, style. I think this one came uh, from from uh, the factory, so with one of my other radios. But um, regardless of that, this is what we're going to get. You get your radio and uh, good alignment on it, and you'll be all set. So I'll be back to show you a little bit about the radio. We'll talk really quick about what you are wanting to know about the amplifier that you possibly will run with it, and uh, we'll get this heading your way. Okay, Mario, so we're doing the PC programming, so the cable works just fine, just like I thought it would. Um, just looks a little bit different. Uh, most of the cables look like this, um, but yours looks a little bit different on the, on the end of it, but it does work just fine with a Windows-based PC. If you have a, a Linux or Mac or whatever those are, I'm not sure how these cables work with those, any of them. I know there's been a few customers in the past that said they've got it to work, but it's a little more difficult. So I've never owned a Linux or a, a Macintosh Apple style computer. So I've always had Windows and I've never had any trouble with any of the cables I've ever gotten in from the factory. Um, with any of these radios, they always work with the software. Usually the main major issue with any, any uh, programming issue would be the COM port. The wrong one is selected on the Windows based computer. Alright, so we're going to power it back on. We've got all the bands now, everything is open. 12 and 10 and everything else. So, give you everything you want there. And then some, uh, we'll go into the menu really quick and just touch on a couple things here. Um, I'm going to put the stop in 5K. I'm going to put the frequency uh, priority on. So that way, when you're in channel mode, you'll still be in channel mode. If you want to go to frequency mode, then you're moving 5K. Just remember, I think, believe if you move in frequency mode, channel mode will move with it so when you come back you'll be on a different frequency so a lot of guys uh, can get a little confused with that I think you're well versed you have a quad 5 and 2 already so that you sent in to me before so <clears throat> I don't think you have any problems with that um, I do put some memory channels in I don't know if I showed you that on the quad 5 and 2 but I think I did the same thing for you there so you have um, Obviously, the one thing I wish you could change on this is when you go into memory, you have to hit frequency to see where you're at. But I put in some popular frequencies. You may want to change these. That's entirely up to you. But they are there, and the right mode correlates to that frequency, which out of popularity. So that's done. Um, no weather is here. Uh, I don't know if you'll get anything on that or not, but uh, it's there. <clears throat> has all the popular American no weather frequencies. So if you don't want it to scan, just tap that button. It says scan off. Otherwise, it's back on. So those, everything's working there. So I'll get this aligned. I'll do the S meter. I'll show you the power it's doing. I'll make sure on FM you got about a 4 kilohertz deviation. And then we'll talk really quick about the amp. This is the transmit frequency for AM FM. So it's outstanding like they all are. This is where the radio comes in out of the factory. It's usually about 2.79, 2.8 kilohertz deviation. So I'll increase that for you to about four. So I gave you about 4.1. That way if there's any little bit of fluctuation, you should still be right around four. All right, here's your um, AM on low right here. So it really ramps up and then kind of throttles itself back. Um, There's the uh, inside of the waveform, looks really good, so 
Looking really good there. Here's up on the spectrum analyzer with 20 kilohertz uh, bandwidth. So you got 10 kilohertz on each side. And it's looking really good for AM for low power. All right, here's the high power modulation for AM. So it's our, our carrier right there. And then there's our modulation. So I'll zoom that up a little bit. Pretty good there too. You don't want to go too much here because if you, well, we can take it just a little bit more maybe. You really can work against yourself if you take that any farther than that. But uh, it's still nice and round. So let's bring that down into perspective a little bit better. So there it is again. And there it is right there. Here it is up here on the 20 kilohertz span. So pretty clean. You know your next complete frequency is over here. So personally for what I would run, I would probably run it a little bit less. So some of this is a little lower. But I know a lot of guys want the mod. You can always turn the mod down on the radio. So you know it, it, it's just the nature of AM there. So. If it's a little too hot for somebody or something, just back it down from 36 down to like 20 something, 25 or something, and it'll uh, clean that up a little bit. But it's not terrible. Obviously, we've seen a lot worse. All right, here's the sideband. This is the high power. This is always the sore spot for me on these. Um, but I'll straighten that out for you, like I always do. Okay, there you go. It's looking a lot better. I'll do that. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to do it like that. Let me actually bring this in a little bit smaller on the screen. So yeah, it's nice and round now. So looking a whole lot better than what it did before. Okay, Mario, so we're back after the alignment. I turned down my HF radio. I was listening to 17 meter. Uh, South America is coming in. So I got my NM532 here. It's only up, partially up. That's all it really needs. Mic gains up all the way, RF powers up all the way. I did make a change on my test uh, setup here, so um, we're using a little bit heavier cable now going into the uh, coupler. I did find that the other cable, there's there's quite a bit of loss actually on some of these cables, uh, the, the thinner gauged cables. So um, so what you'll probably see now on the power is the power is going to be up on some of these radios. And that's just due to the fact that uh, there's less loss coming from here to here versus running a, a piece of coax like RG8X or something. So it, it, every little bit honestly makes a difference in the loss characteristic. And when you have yourself like a, a tracking generator like this, this would be a good reference to you know running the tracking generator uh, protocol to measure loss of cable. And then you would take this off and then you would measure whatever cable you wanted to measure with your tracking generator. And you'll, at least I was pleasantly surprised to see how much loss there actually can be in a small three foot, six feet piece of uh, RG8X or something. So what we'll notice now is the power on sideband will probably be a little higher. So versus some of the other radios that I've shown before, it's not going to be a ton higher, but you know, now we're seeing upwards of like 60 again, PEP. So Obviously, uh, the 50 ohm uh, range is much better on this radio, or I'm sorry, on, on the whole system now because that cable has way less loss. And I don't know, it, it's something very I find very interesting how much loss you can get in such a short piece of cable. And then you know, I'm not one to say that we should run out and run coax cable the the, the diameter of like a, a soup can or something like that. But I mean, loss is part of of radio. And to overcome loss, sometimes you know, in a short range like this, it's really easy. In, in a in a a whole setup going from an outside antenna to an indoor setup, it's a little harder to do that. Not everybody really cares as much, but in this scenario, we're getting basically maximum efficiency from the radio right to that dummy load right there. So, you know, that's why we're seeing just a tad bit more power now. The radio is the other radios would still do the same. But the difference is the cable uh, coming out of that uh, bird coupler up there going into the LP coupler was shedding some power away from it, which is pretty amazing. I still can't believe that uh, the radio, oh, uh, you know, we would see maybe 10 watts less or something before with that other piece of cable. So I just find that very interesting. 
So that's your sideband anyways, that's the power that it's doing. So again, be, be aware that what you all see here is basically the same as all the other ones I've done. It's not really swinging that high up on the power scale or anything like that. So, you know, that's normal. Um, <clears throat> AM here. About 8 watts is where we set you, so that's what it's showing. Uh, well, actually, it's up here. It's going to be a little bit higher than 8 right now, but with the, with the talking into the microphone here, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, check, check. So we're seeing about the same on AM, too. So, you know, it's going to be upwards of a little over 60 now with that uh, heavier gauge cable there. There goes the squeakers. <laughs> so a lot of guys will probably think that this is better, but honestly, it's the same as what it was before. It's just the cable. It's, it's just cable. That's all it is. So the radio always does what it does it's just how you terminate your cable going into your antenna or in my case this dummy load here so cable does matter um this is obviously some higher quality cable here i have some end connectors here but they're also going to so 239 adapters but regardless of that it's working well so that's the point of the test here to show you that it's working well and then on am with it all the way down one two three one two three hello check check one two it's gonna swing less with it all the way down uh with it all the way up hello 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 it's gonna swing like 80 or 100 or whatever according to that meter but it's not doing that much so just keep that in mind but with it all the way down about one watt or so and then it's gonna kind of swing all over the place like most of the radios all do so we're not seeing a huge power number here but uh in, in essence, maybe 25. I saw 30 once when I was testing this a minute ago, so it, it's going to fluctuate quite a bit. But uh, you run that up to about 2 watts, it'll be a little more consistent. There's about 2 watts right there, so with about 2 watts, you can see the power slightly comes up. So it's working just the way it should. Uh, when I come back, I'll talk about the amp really quick, and then I'll do the S meter adjustment. Then we'll get this one boxed and put the customs on it and all that, and get it ready to send off to you tomorrow. So I'll be back, I gotta go get my son from the bus, and then we'll probably have a bite to eat for supper, and then I'll finish your radio up. We'll talk about the amp, hopefully I can just keep this video paused. If it somehow stops, then I'll just make another quick one. I've already talked about the amps before, I'll just, real, a couple minutes, just a quick conversation about the amps with these, and that's it. Okay, Mario, so we're back on your radio here. Um... I just wanted to show this is one of the newer ones with the version number in the engineering menu. You can look up version, version 101. So I know that I said before that this version would do a little less power, <clears throat> but every time I change my setup, which I do sometimes here in the in the shack, in the testing side of the shack, anyways, um, you know, every time you change something, kind of everything kind of changes with it. So the power meter as accurate as the LP100A is, I mean, if you're not giving it enough signal, like as far as with coax cable and stuff with loss characteristic, that stuff's always going to change. So, again, you know, it's it's just par for the course that, you know, if you're not paying attention to that kind of stuff, you will see some minor differences on power. So just because it, again, like if it does what it does here doesn't always mean and there's a lot of truth to this too and you, you could have your setup in your house take it out to your car and completely retest everything and see different numbers so there's no two installations that are ever going to be the same and the same can be said with you know amplifiers but we'll get back to that in a minute i'm gonna it'll be just a second for you guys but i'm gonna do the alignment on the s meter first so i get get that set up here for the am fm one first and I'll get that all done, and then we'll talk about the amp really quick, and like I said, then it, this is going to be it for it. Alright, so we'll just talk about the amp really quick. So if you want to run a 503 HD, you got to be kind of careful with these, because these are a higher powered radio. Um, first thing, I wouldn't run anything less than like 10 gauge wire. Um, that's, that's just what they recommend from the factory for the RM Italy. Uh, to supply enough current and amperage and everything. Obviously, if you're going to run it in the home environment, have a, a power supply that can handle the current draw. And if you're in a vehicle, uh, go right to the battery. And you should be able to, any vehicle should be able to handle that kind of current draw unless you got some teeny tiny little, I don't know, maybe four-cylinder vehicle or newer vehicle with a small four-cylinder. Maybe they won't be able to, I don't know. But anything older, especially if like a V6 or something, no problem there. 
usually all nader on a vehicle like that is is well uh, capable of handling a little bit extra current draw from an amp. Uh, mobile setups can be kind of tricky anyways. There's so many different variables. And also the same can be said for home setup. So again, I can give advice, but everybody's setup is different. Everybody's uh, antenna is going to be deployed in a different situation. Coax cable being used. Everything plays a factor. Common mode current is a huge issue with a lot of people's setups when it comes to CB stuff and even in the ham world. So common mode current is uh, is a killer of, of you know what we're trying to do. So to avoid that, I recommend putting like a one-to-one -one current balance on any outdoor antenna that you have and not just coiling coax like actually get a real current balance or make one yourself with some ferrites on the end of the cable and kind of you know get as many as you can i say at least five is probably good but you know something like that like some mix 31 or something you, you want to make sure that common mode current doesn't happen because that's there's more susceptibility to that when you're running uh high power and fact of the matter is a couple hundred watts I mean that's enough to create some common mode current that's going to come back down that's going to cause the radio to see a higher reflect and also the amplifier which is hard on them as well so there's just so many variables so let's talk about power input really quick so let me bring up the info on that so basically for that amplifier the 503 HDR admittedly no more than 35 watts peak envelope power input or on FM no more than 35 watts continuous so that's something you're gonna to have to monitor on your own side uh, get yourself a quality meter I say get yourself one that you feel comfortable with obviously if you spend more money the level of accuracy on meters does greatly increase you know the more money you spend so that these are factors that I can't control and only the operator can decide what's best for them. If you go with something that's a lower price, generally speaking, you won't get as good of accuracy on the peak side. And that's going to play into how long maybe your equipment lasts. Maybe you'll maybe you'll last a long time. Maybe a lot of guys are lucky. I don't know. But I have means of measuring pretty much accuracy at my disposal. Um, not everybody can, and that's understandable. So just be careful with that kind of stuff. But know that... 35 watts PEP is the maximum, so they, they're saying that 25 watts is enough to drive the amplifier to a good operating level. That's obviously with the, the attenuating switch, that the switch on the front that has the whatever the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I don't have one in front of me to look at right now, but uh, it, it's recommended not to ever run that at the full level anyways. Um, they say to run it at the level before, something like that, so... <clears throat> just because it has the option doesn't necessarily mean you should run it at full bore all the time or anything because it's not really going to help you enough. And if you were to download the manual for the 503 HD or any of the other RM amps, they, they really write a lot of good information there. So a lot can be learned just by reading what they're telling you about their product because they know more about it than anyone else would because they make the thing. And they want to educate people on what's the best way to run it. So... Those are things that I, I recommend. Um, get yourself as good a quality peak reading watt meter as you can. <coughs> the meter that I showed yesterday on a video, this one has about a plus or minus 5%. It's pretty good. It's pretty respectable. Plus or minus 5% is good. Um, but there are some that are plus or minus 10%. And then there are some other meters that guys confuse that don't read peak at all. And then they don't realize that. And then they're talking on AM, and let's say that their meter is only showing 7, 8 watts, but in reality they're doing over 30 or something. Then that, that's a problem, and that's going to cause said amplifier to burn. So you have to be careful. Sideband as well. Sideband is full peak envelope power. Uh, I'm sorry about the dog, but uh, there is no reason to measure average power on sideband. That's useless for what we're doing. Same as AM, we always want to measure peak because peak watts are talking watts. Peak envelope power, modulation is registered in peak power, not average. If you want to use average, everybody should switch to FM because that's fully just full on power. And I don't know why, for whatever reason, FM hasn't taken more hold in America because you guys can run your dedicated full on power. As soon as you press the mic, it's all there like a flipping a light on in the room. 
but for whatever reason it just hasn't and I don't know if I was big into running power and wanted this big high power station I would run FM because as soon as you key down if you do 2500 watts you're doing 2500 watts and continuously not whatever swinging whatever it's, it's full on so uh, FM is is high duty cycle full duty cycle so that's where the big power guys should go but for whatever reason they don't and it's not my concern because I'm not a big power guy but uh, that's it for you Mario hopefully that helped you out um, I'm not going to really go through the whole thing and showing you where to set this and stuff because you got to have a meter on your side to be able to read some peak and you'll be able to figure that out on your own setup with your own jumpers and your own antenna and all that just because it tests one way on the dummy load as well when you hook it up to the antenna there's all those other variables come into play things change so I test on a, on a bird dummy load there's no big secret here but when I hook things up to my antenna the carrier levels look different things change because of impedance changes in, in coax cable what the feed point is at the antenna all that stuff is a factor so when we adjust radios I do it on a perfect balanced 50 ohm load but no one in reality has that at their shack so you know we have to accept the fact that we're in an imperfect world and all these other variables are going to come into play with our setup so the main thing is we want to have fun we want to run our equipment safely and we want to use it the best we can and not have anything break I think everyone could agree with me there that no one wants their equipment to burn up or blow up or, or fizzle out so by using caution and trying to get the best tools that you can at your disposal you're gonna have better chance of that never happening never having an issue so that's my spiel take it for what it is um, I don't know everything nor do I claim to know everything so you know anyone that says they do know everything I would I would stay away from them because I'm I'll tell you the first and foremost I'm probably one of the most humblest guys on on the earth when it comes to radio stuff I'm constantly still learning new things that's what makes it fun and if I if I just close my mind like a closed book then it would just be be nothing you know I would be bored with the hobby so I'm still learning going everything is going well and hopefully it'll continue to go in that direction and every time I learn something new about maybe my equipment or something I don't mind showing stuff once in a while when time allows so having all this cool equipment there's still a lot to learn with it so you know it, it's fun if I if it wasn't fun I wouldn't be doing it let's just say that so thanks a lot Mario 73 and we'll hopefully catch everybody later and uh, hope everybody has the rest of a, a good week tomorrow is Thursday so I'm back to work 73